We're going to revisit limits that involve radicals now or square roots. But before I do that, I want to kind of review this technique of rationalization. So if you have a square root of x plus a number, what happens when I multiply it by the same thing, but instead I have subtraction? I flip the sign there. So if you FOIL this out, you'll get square root of x squared minus 4 square roots of x plus 4 square roots of x minus 16. And if you notice, these two here have opposite signs, so they will cancel. And I will be left with the square root of x squared, which is x minus 16. So when I multiply these two together, I get something in the end that has no square root in it at all. And that's a very nice thing to have. So, and maybe I should mention that when I do this, I'm assuming x is positive here. So let's use this idea to help us calculate limits. So let's look at, find the limit. x goes to 0, square root of x plus 1 minus 1 over x. So here if I plug in 0 into the top, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 0. If I plug it into the bottom, I'll get 0, which means I cannot just plug in my number in place of x. I can't just do direct substitution. So, direct substitution fails here. I'm gonna have to do something different. And in, in the last video, we, we talked about factoring. I can't really factor this. But what I could do is I could take my function and I can multiply by 1, but I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator. So I'm going to take the numerator and I'm just going to change the sign in the middle to plus 1. And I'm going to multiply the same thing on bottom. So really, I haven't changed anything here. I'm still, I multiplied by 1, essentially. But now if you FOIL out the top, you'll get x plus 1 minus 1. And then I'm getting, I'm not going to distribute in the denominator. Well, if I simplify here in the top, we'll see that I now have the same thing in the numerator and denominator. I have an x in both places, which means I can then cancel it because, again, we're not letting x be 0. We can cancel that and get 1 over the square root of x plus 1 plus 1. And now I can compute the limit of this simplified version. And I'll be able to use direct substitution here. So 1 over 1 plus 1, or 1 half, will be the limit. So this idea of rationalization comes in very helpful. It's very beneficial because it gets rid of a square root for me and in the end because we got rid of that square root we were able to cancel back here.